Hi, and thank you for joining us today. This is Marie Spaulding of Living Felts, and today we have for you a fun and fast project with our cookie cutter felts. You'll be amazed at how fast you can create and decorate just about anything, whether you're brand new to needle felting or you've been felting for a while. Take a look at just a couple of the projects we've made with just a few shapes. Here's an idea for maybe decorating a baby blanket or a diaper bag, or even making a pocket on a little baby's jumper. Here, we've taken our freestanding ducky and sewn him onto a welcome new baby card. You could also frame this piece for a little piece of wall art in a nursery, or add fiber to your scrapbooking by sewing him in and getting him right on the cover of a brand new scrapbook. You could even create a baby mobile, or I'm sure tons of ideas are floating around in your head already. Then, after learning how to make the freestanding pieces, we'll show you what's different about felting onto fabric. In this case, you might create a pillow, decorate some jeans or a denim jacket, or maybe even a handbag. So let's get started and see what you need. One of the first things you'll want are some cookie cutters in the basic shapes of your projects. And we're gonna start with our ducky. Today, for our fiber, we're using our Merino Cross felting bats. These wonderful bats come in tons of colors. They have nice variegation in them, so they add some life and zest to your projects, and they're super easy to work with. All we need to do is tear off some fibers and just fill our cookie cutter with wool. You can fill it up all the way. For the freestanding shapes, we want to make them rather thick, probably about at least the thickness of my finger. And then I'm going to use my 38 star needle, which I call my workhorse, and holding the cookie cutter firmly onto the foam, just needle felt right into the cookie cutter. We're just poking it right in, and initially we are attaching the wool to the foam without crunching deep in. We're just allowing it to tack lightly to the foam. Follow around the shape of your cookie cutter so that you get some nice definition in all the points and dips. Make sure you keep your eye on your project. Avoid hitting the rim, especially of a metal cookie cutter if you can, because it might bend or break the tip of your needle, which is very brittle. And if you make a point to keep your needle inside the cookie cutter and not lift it all the way out, you're a lot less likely to hit the rim and a lot less likely to poke your fingers. Now what's great about this, even if you've been felting for a while, you can get some really exact results from what you're doing, and it's a great way to introduce either children or someone brand new to needle felting. It's really easy for people when they can see shapes that they recognize and they don't have to try and make it up on their own, especially if you feel less confident about your ability to create something that you desire to, then try a cookie cutter shape and they come in so many designs. So we're just gonna continue felting here, but if you wanna make a little more rapid progress, I like this multi-needle tool. This is a four needle tool. And what I want to point out here is that I'm just bouncing the needles off of the piece. I'm not crunching into the foam. If we do that, we're more likely to tear the foam by using more effort than we need. And it's also gonna make it hard to pull up our project. So just allow your needles to bounce and spend some time to make sure it's the same depth all the way around. Add wool as you need. So I have one that I've been working on for a little bit. And here's my little ducky. You can see he's just about the thickness of my finger. And what we want to do is peel him off the foam and work it from the other side. You can see that he's a little fuzzy. So I'll take my 38 star needle and just spend some time coaxing those fibers back towards the middle. I'm actually gonna needle felt over the entire surface and firm it up from the underneath side as well. Notice my angle is basically a 15, a 45 to a 15 degree angle. We don't need to go straight down because then we're more likely to poke the fibers through to the other side. So spend some time with your ducky and then if you like, like these here, you can add a little detail. <clears throat> We've added some orange fibers for the beak and for the wing and just a little black dot for the eye. 
And when you sew it onto a piece of fabric, you can just run a stitch right through the wing, or you could stitch all the way around the bird if you wanted. You could use that as part of the design, or once you run a stitch, you can just run it, put a tiny piece of wool right on top, tack it down, and cover up that stitch. Very, very easy to work with. So I hope you have fun with some of your shapes, and let's look at felting onto fabric. Here I have just a little piece of fleece, and we're going to use our heart shape. And this is more merino cross. This is a raspberry color, very vibrant and very fun. And again, we're just going to pull it off and fill up our heart shape, making sure to make your layers as even as possible. This might be a fun way to decorate a denim jacket, maybe make a sun or make a purse or even decorate, use little hearts to decorate the pockets of jeans. And you can start with your 38 star needle and trace all around the perimeter. Just get the wool tacked down, gently guide it in with your needle. And here you definitely want to hold your cookie cutter down very firmly. Don't allow it to shift or you're going to get a fuzzy line on the bottom. So take your time here and hold it in place because it's more likely to shift on the fabric than it is on the foam. Once you have your wool fairly tacked down, and we're going to use a multi-needle tool again, which you don't have to use, but it can make your project go more quickly. In this case, we are going to poke all the way through, whereas before we were kind of bouncing. Here, we really want to attach the fibers to the fabric. So spend your time really poking it in and getting it nice and level. If you like, once you get your shape firmly into place, you can even wet felt it. By Once it's completed, you can add some soap and water and maybe use a little sandwich bag to rub your hands and firm up those fibers even more to get a really nice finish like we did with this one here. So I hope you have a great time with your project. As always, we'll hope you'll send your pictures to customer service at livingfelt.com and join us on Facebook. Search Living Felt to join our friends online. Thanks for joining us today. This is Marie Spaulding of Living Felt. Make it a great day and as always, happy felting.